Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, New East Augusta, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. Back in the 1970s, Jorai's parallel processing was attacked and ridiculed as a huge waste of everybody's time. The parallel supercomputer was mocked by Seymour Cray the supercomputer designer that designed seven intense supercomputers of the 1980s. Massively parallel supercomputing across billions upon millions of processors represents the peak of supercomputer knowledge and demands an impeccable understanding of physics, algebra, and calculus. My primary goal when parallel processing across processors that define and outline an internet is to hit targets that we are invincible to other supercomputer scientists and do so by maintaining a one problem to one processor mapping. That mapping in turn is a precondition to actualizing the world's fastest computer. In the 1970s and 80s, my grand challenge was to figure out how to massively parallel process and to prove that the new knowledge of how to solve problems in parallel will become the vital technology that will underpin future computers and supercomputers. I was only interested in making the weightiest discovery that will upgrade parallel processing from science fiction to reality. It took me 16 years, onward of June 20, 1974, in Covalis, Oregon, United States, to discover practical parallel supercomputing. After those 16 years, the prize committee for the top prize in supercomputing invited me to San Francisco, California, for its annual, for its award ceremony, and gave me the platform to present my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing and present it to the world at large and present it to the community of 25,000 vector supercomputer scientists that, that ridiculed and mocked parallel supercomputing as a beautiful theory that lacked and experimental confirmation. Over the years, the finalists for the top prize in the field of supercomputing consisted of teams of up to 50 seasoned supercomputer scientists. I stood out because I was the only person that won that top prize and won it alone for my contributions to the development of the parallel supercomputer. If supercomputer scientists were ranked like the military, the inventor of the parallel supercomputer will be elevated to the rank of field marshal of the British Army or to the rank of five-star general of the US Army. Those are the highest ranks in the Army that few, if any, are appointed to. Today, parallel supercomputing has become distilled and deciphered as a new contribution to a new computer science. The year 1989 
was when the supercomputer industry understood and began to harness that new knowledge of massively parallel supercomputing and incorporate it as the vital technology that underpins every supercomputer. Back in the 1980s, the parallel supercomputer was like a giant ocean wave that many supercomputer scientists were still riding with most barely clinging onto the then radical technology and with some falling off it. Back in the 1980s, many supercomputer scientists mocked my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing and made fun of me. Today, Parallel processing is the vital technology that underpins every supercomputer that is used by those supercomputer scientists that mocked me and made fun of me. Insightful and brilliant lecture.